what if there's a way to prevent Canadians, especially young people, from taking their own lives by tracking their posts on social media? About 4,000 Canadians end their lives by suicide every year. The Canadian Mental Health Association says it is the second most common cause of death for young people in this country. Men in their 40s and 50s in Canada have the highest suicide rate. And that brings us to the what if part. A company that uses artificial intelligence is being hired by the federal government. And the hope is what that AI finds can anticipate and even prevent suicides in Canada. Brett Ruskin is in Halifax with a story this morning. Brett, we know this is a difficult time of year. It certainly can be for people who struggle with mental health problems, but we have been watching spikes of suicides in Canadian communities no matter the season. So tell us what this company is going to do to try to reduce those numbers. And good morning, Heather. Well, this company is called Advanced Symbolics. And what it's going to do, it's going to use artificial intelligence and social media to try to predict and prevent suicides. So what they do, they're going to be watching for previous instances in spikes in suicide to try to predict those events that if they reoccur. So one question is, if you post or tweet something that is considered suicide-related behavior, is there going to be a, a mental health expert or a government uh, official who's going to be knocking on your door to do a wellness check? No, that's not what's going to be happening here. Again, this company is looking for spikes in suicide. So looking at previous events, identifying precursors using their AI and watching for those red flags in other communities across the country, whether it be uh, the spike that we saw here in Cape Breton, for example, northern communities, even universities university campuses. So that is what the government is going to be watching for in a pilot project that launches soon. Heather. So we're seeing more and more, Brett, just how AI can be used to sift big data, spot things that people may miss, human eyes. How precise is this company's program at predicting the things that you're talking about, the social trends? Well, this company claims to be the only social, the only marketing firm that has correctly predicted the Canadian election, the U.S. election, and Brexit spot on. And so they have made those predictions in the past using this technique of using AI and social media monitoring. That was to assess public opinion. This is more so to assess personal emotion. And again, it's being used in a pilot project that will last about three months until the government decides whether it will continue with this coast-to-coast -coast monitoring of public social media accounts. Heather. In Ottawa this morning, Kenton White, who's the chief data scientist for Advanced Symbolics, that's the AI company the federal government has hired. Mr. White, good morning to you and Happy New Year. Hi, good morning. Happy New Year to you, Heather. Let's begin simply but specifically. Tell me about the technology you're going to be using and what you're going to be doing with it. Thanks. Our key technology is that we're able to create randomized controlled samples using online sources. This is equivalent to how we used to would run telephone polls, where we can create large numbers of representative populations and see what they're saying and see what they're saying now, see what they were talking about many, many years ago. For Canada, yeah, go ahead. So when you use that, when you look through these social media posts, what are you specifically going to be looking for, the warning signs you're going to be watching for when it comes to suicide? Well, AI works a bit differently than us telling the AI, telling her what she's looking for. Uh, what we'd start with are past events, past you know, tragic events that have happened. And our AI, she reads and learns the patterns leading up to those prior events and then applies those to future events. So at this point, we really don't know what it is that she's looking for, she's going to find. And even once she finds them, we have to ask her what she found and she has to tell us as much like an interview to find out what she is looking for. My goodness, AI and, she, and even with, with a she. So this, this entity that's going to be looking through these social media posts, why is that more effective than our own human eyes or human eyes monitoring these same sorts of posts? It's a, it's a question of scale. So we have over 150,000 people that uh, our AI, she's keeping track of, that she's reading and learning from. And she's doing this 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And she's going back four or five years to learn. This is a task that if we apply people to, um, it's a little bit beyond our scope. So how long before you know what she is picking up? Well, it usually takes us about 90 days 
for the AI to train. I mean, she learns just like a regular person will. She's working with clinicians and our staff. And after about 90 days, she'll start to learn and be able to pick up on uh, these signals. And then from there, we can understand what it is that she's learning and what she is seeing. Okay. And then what do you hope to do with that information? I mean, what, what do you hope, how do you think this could be effective in stopping suicide spikes? Well, we, we don't want to be minority report. We don't want the government coming and knocking on doors. Instead, what we want to do is be able to bring the resources to the communities that need them most before they need them so that we can have extra counselors or we can have extra outreach to help the communities that need it before the tragedy strikes. And then when you say you don't want government knocking on doors, there are going to be any time you're talking about she and collecting data and looking at social media posts, people with privacy concerns, personal information concerns. How do you answer those? Yes. So we are dealing with a very large anonymized sample. We use the privacy techniques that are uh, industry standard, the same kinds of techniques that are used by Statistics Canada and all the other organizations out there that are collecting and dealing with personal information. We're not micro-targeting. We're not reaching out and knowing anything about any one individual. We're knowing everything we can about a population of over 150,000 Canadians. Kenton White. A pleasure to have you on this morning. Thank you very much. Chief Data Scientist you, at Advanced Symbolics. And more on that story coming up here.